The NHL season is here. Who is going to win it all and everything in between? Spoked Z drops the final word today on Locked on Wilds. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day, and in this case, your second listen, because as you've heard all week, we are doing two-a-days leading up to the start of the season. So uh, technically your second listen today, but uh, during a normal week, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen. A reminder, we're free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, Spoke Z joins the show to discuss the start of the NHL season. We'll take a look at uh, some of the things we expect from the uh, four divisions in the league, and general mayhem will ensue as well. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer at the helm for my first full season of coverage here at Locked on Wild. Happy to have you along for our bonus Wednesday episode. And we're joined by the true, the one true sicko, uh, Spoke Z, joining us here today to discuss uh, the NHL, which is fully here uh, after a couple of games last night. Spoke to my friends. Welcome to the show. Uh, as always, great to have you. Uh, hockey's back. What more can you want? Hockey's back, baby. Last night rocked so hard. The first game sucked, but <laughs> Heinen, Heinen and Boyle scoring was cool. Uh, I tried to get the uh, Vasilevsky wears illegal equipment controversy going again um, successfully. And then uh, that Vegas-Seattle game rocked super hard, so... We're back, baby. Yeah, it's it, it's here, and you know we we're gonna have just a slew of games every day, all the way until the uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, so just chaos, and it's just gonna be an absolute grind. Happy to be part of it. I don't want to glean too much from the uh, the first two games of the season because, well, it's the first two games of the season. But looking at that Tampa Bay Pittsburgh game. And the Lightning end up losing, um, which I'm sure upset a lot of people because they gave up three empty netters. Uh, So people that had the under, probably not pleased. But is this just kind of a red flag for Tampa Bay heading into the year that, you know, despite the fact that they're back-to-back Stanley Cup champions, that that depth took a hit in the offseason and that it might be a little bit of a tougher road for them? Or is, is is that just nonsense? No, I mean, I think, like, it'll take them a few games to get back up to speed. I mean, it does seem like everybody's kind of just been like, yeah, well, they're Tampa Bay, so we're going to pencil them in for, you know, um, a third cup, at least as the favorite. Um, But, I mean, that they throughout that the last season and all the playoffs, like, that line of Goudreau, Coleman, Gord, they, whenever they needed to get, something done they needed a tough matchup that's who they threw out there and they lost all three of them so now they're banking on those guys that they're known for having like come come out of nowhere the ross coltons of the world take on a bigger role uh and matthew joseph who i who i think is more than capable of doing it but it's gonna take him a little bit to really find that groove and i mean you look at the situation last night you're in the locker room forever. Then you're on the ice forever. They do the cup presentation. There's a lot going on. Um, so, I mean, I think that that game, they looked horrible. But I would say that's probably more of a one-off than anything. And, again, there was three empty netters because Cooper doesn't like the under. <laughs> um, which, I mean, I love it. I love it for him. But I'd say that they're, they're going to be fine. Um, I'm a big Matthew Joseph guy. I think he's going to have a big year as of as finally being able to be a regular in that lineup. And they're just too good to play like that. That, That's not going to happen every game. Um, And they still have uh, the guy that uses illegal goaltender 
uh, equipment, Vasilevsky and net. And anytime you have that, you have Kucherov and you have Victor Hedman, I think you're going to be okay. Yeah, they're just every every loophole that can be used mm-hmm. is being used. And, you know, bigger goalie pads. Why not? If, uh, if One thing about goalie. Tampa. Sorry, not to cut you off. I, I meant to add, though, um, they've played so much hockey in like a year and a half. Because people forget that it's been an abbreviated offseason year prior. Yeah. They won they won two cups in the in the bubble or they won the cup in the bubble, they come back, they have that they have that shortened season last year, they go all the way again. They went so they that's that's a ton of hockey. Um and I mean when Pittsburgh went back to back, um, we saw a similar storyline. So I, I mean they they've been playing a ton of hockey and I'm sure they're not used to having Kucherov in the lineup during the regular season, so that's another adjustment too. Just, just take some time to kind of get all the pieces, and uh, yeah, a guy who spent uh, all year on IR last year and then was ready for the playoffs. Now he's playing in the regular season, so just, uh, just some tweaks, subtle tweaks, and uh, they'll be fine. Vasilevsky might come back with like that Kanye music video where he's wearing like he's like <laughs> seventeen human beings in one. He might like that. He might get some new equipment and come back with some of that action. So he just asks for a replica of every single goalie's pads in the NHL and then just wears all of them. He's gonna go to the trainer and say, "Hey, these pads didn't work. Get me something double the size. I need bigger." So yeah, <laughs> I need to be bigger. Uh, on the uh, the other game, as you mentioned, Kraken and Vegas, and that was just electric. Um, greatest intro to a hockey game I think that has ever been created with the Kraken thing on the ice and the, uh, the actual night mascot vanquishing uh, said Kraken, just like happened in the game. And then you get like, you get the hot start from Vegas as we kind of expected, but Seattle mounts the comeback and you know, that game could have gone either way. So I guess my question and kind of pull away from the, uh, the Kraken game is, uh, is this Seattle team going to be a little better than we thought? Uh, do they have a legit chance to uh, to hop into the playoff picture in the uh, Pacific Division? I'm a lot higher, apparently, than like most people on the Kraken. I had them. I was talking to the Soda Pod guys and Micheletti, and I was we were doing our previews, and I had them in third in that division. I think that division stinks. Um, yeah. And when you look at their lineup, they have a lot of guys. Maybe they don't have that like point per game 40 goal score but they have a lot of guys especially like in the middle of their lineup um really low event defensive focus hockey is like it's just what they play and they all look in their previous teams like they've been primed for bigger roles and i think people have kind of discounted that as i think people have discounted that as saying like yeah well when they do have a bigger role and they do get more minutes where I don't think that's I don't think it'll go well for them. Like they, yeah, sure. On other, on other teams where they've been a little bit more protected, then yeah, they look right and they look like they're ready to get more minutes. But um, when it does actually happen and the teams relying on that, a lot of people are kind of discounting them and saying that they're not going to be capable of doing it. But like when you actually dive into the type of minutes they're playing in their previous teams, they were playing those hard minutes. You look like a Cali Yarncrow was a sneaky selkie guy last year. Uh, Mason Appleton was solid for Winnipeg. Um, I mean, we know Ryan Donato, if there's one thing he does do, it's, he's a natural scorer. He's going to score goals. Um, and then they have a really good defense and two good goalies. So in that division where everyone is pretty bad other than Vegas, everyone has serious warts. I have them as a playoff team and I put them third behind Vegas and Edmonton. So okay, I think, I think they're going to be a fight. They're gonna, I think they're going to be a, a really annoying team to play against. I think at times they're going to be like, kind of a hard team to watch in the sense that it's a lot of just like low event hockey. Um, but once that, the, once they figure out their 6D and once they kind of just like get into a groove, I think they're going to be fine. Be nice to see Kirsten Susi uh, get some time. I know he didn't play opening night. He will though. That That's just simply <clears throat> trying to figure out who makes it and who doesn't on that roster. So I, saw, I think he was ready to play, and then because they had that weird COVID issue, and then last second, everyone that they said wasn't going to be able to play, all of a sudden they were good again to play. I was so confused. Yeah. Um, so I, I have no idea, but he he'll I mean he'll be in that. He'll they'll he'll be there. 
I think he'll be changing in and out between him, Lozon. Yeah. Um, I love Lozon, but everyone in Boston hated him. (laughs) I'm just trying to craft a scenario where we trade for him back. Uh, Bill Guerin does, and I don't know. Might not happen, but we'll see. Um, Never know. I have an idea for the rest of the show that we'll get to next. We're going to go through the four divisions and play a little if not them, then who. Uh, I'll explain more next here on Locked on Wild. BetOnline.ag is back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. And as always, BetOnline.ag is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. So head to BetOnline.ag on your laptop or mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code LOCKEDON to receive that welcome bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. And in this week, your second listen too. Bonus episode here today with Spoke Z. And I've got a game idea that we will play for the rest of the show. We're going to do, if not them, then who? And so you've got some pretty solid favorites in uh, pretty much every division. In the Central, you got the Avalanche. In the Pacific, you got the Vegas Golden Knights. You've got the Tampa Bay Lightning. And you've got uh, whoever else in the other division that I'm completely forgetting. Um, the Metropolitan Division, you could argue it's Pittsburgh uh, and or Washington. So what we're going to do, I'm going to have you list the team. If you take out the favorites, who is going to have the best chance to win the cup uh, or at least get to the conference finals from those divisions? We will start with the Central. So Colorado, obviously the favorite. If you take away the Avalanche, who has the best chance to get to the conference finals from the Central Division? Uh, I mean, in my in our preseason rankings or whatever, I had Minnesota too, but I, you can take your pick between them and Winnipeg, I think. I think Winnipeg did address that defense a little bit. Um, I know people like went nuts because they went and got Brendan Dillon and Nate Schmidt. And that's definitely an upgrade over what they had before. I think they went a little bit too crazy and like really overhyped both of them, but it was harder. It it was going to be hard to get any worse than that defense was before. Um, And I mean, when you have the second best goalie in the world, that helps. I think Nick Ehlers is primed for yet another really, really good year. He doesn't get enough love outside of like, Winnipeg and then like the hardcore fan that watches every game. He's unbelievable. Um, And I think Dubois, he can't possibly be worse than he was last year. So I think Winnipeg's a good choice um, between Winnipeg and Minnesota. Okay. Um, Let's do the Pacific then. Vegas Golden Knights, obviously the favorite there. Throw them out the window. Um, So maybe the Kraken, maybe the San Jose Sharks. I don't know. Um, of the Pacific Division, not named the Vegas Golden Knights, who has the best chance to go from there? This one's brutal because it's like <laughs> Vegas, then there's like eight tiers, and then there's yeah. the next team. And again, I had the Oilers as the second best team in that division, if for no other reason than they have like Connor McDavid, who legitimately might put up 150 points this year. Like, that sounds ridiculous, but if he did it, I'd be like, yeah, that's a that's like you're gonna you're gonna try to tell me that kid can't put up two points per game. You know, like I I don't see a world where that's like totally impossible. Um if Mike Smith can be a league average goalie and their defense can hold up somewhat, then I would have them as a pretty solid choice. I didn't like what they did on their back end, but I really like their little additions that they made to their forwards. I liked adding Warren Fogel. I like adding Derek Ryan a lot. He's one of the most underrated players in the league. Plays a really good 200-foot game. He's capable of chipping in some five-on-five offense, and defensively, he's sound. So 
I thought that was like a really good addition for them, whether he's a third or fourth line center. I think they added a little bit more depth there. So I'll go with uh, Edmonton and McJesus putting up 200 points. Um, before we go to the Eastern Conference, is there a scenario where the Arizona Coyotes advance? I, I can't even finish the sentence without sounding like I'm going crazy, but is there a scenario where the Coyotes can, I don't know, put something together? No, but it would be awesome. <laughs> they're they're right? so like I was saying I've said this everywhere that that anytime anyone's asking about Arizona, they're going to be must-watch TV. Like, just for the forwards, it's the most fascinating hockey team I've ever seen in my life. Like, mostly just from, like, a contract standpoint. They have three forwards listed on Cap Friendly um, in their NHL lineup that are signed beyond this season. Andrew Ladd, Nick Schmaltz, and Clay Clayton Keller. Everyone else their contracts are up after this year and only two. And up th so that makes up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, wait. 11 of their four are up after this year. And only two of them are RFA. All of the rest of them are unrestricted. It's fascinating. And then they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight picks in the first two rounds in this upcoming draft. It's the most fascinating team I've ever seen in my life. Um, they're going to legitimately make a case to try to be worse than Buffalo, and I legitimately cannot wait. i got to see when they play each other. Oh. Um, hold on. I, I need to look at that real quick because, like, that will be must-watch television. One of them might just not show up because they're both oh. doing the best. Oh, they're at Buffalo on Saturday. Oh, oh my God. boy. It's Saturday at... It's like a noon game. Oh no! Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, that is uh, it's one p.m. Eastern. So, for Coyotes fans that want to tune into that game, just don't Arizona go to that. plays Buffalo on Saturday, the second game of the year, at ten o'clock your time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah, the goaltenders between Arizona and Buffalo, Carter Hutton for Arizona and I've never heard of this human being Karel Vejmelka that's Arizona's tandem right now I guess unless someone's hurt uh and then for Buffalo it is the two uh Craig Anderson and Dustin Tokarski so those are the four goaltenders that will be in attendance on Saturday morning in the battle for the basement I'll take Buffalo 17 to 13 um, in that game. I feel like there will yeah. be points. Well, I mean, I don't know who's going to score. Or may, I was going to say, maybe there won't be points. Maybe it'll be a 0 0 <laughs> shootout. I like Arizona might just not go. Like, they might just stay. Like, ah, our flight got canceled. You know, like, they might do it. Like, they're, I think they're in Montreal. <sighs> and then they'd be like, you know, we're just going to stay here. Sorry, they're not in Montreal. I think I made that up. No, they're in Columbus. So <laughs> that's going to be must-watch TV, the 16th. Wow. 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, but hey. no, to answer your question, there's no fucking – Oh, damn it, sorry. <laughs> uh, there's no way it happens. <laughs> Uh, well played. Uh, tell you what, we'll move to the Eastern Conference with, if not them, then who? More to come with Spoke Z after this here on Locked on Wild. This fall, Built Bar wants to help you celebrate freedom of choice. Did you know that Built Bar has a wide assortment of delicious flavors? They include coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, Strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. My favorite, for what it's worth, is definitely raspberry. But if you're not sure which one to go with, just grab the mixed box. You'll get two each of those flavors. You can figure it out from there. Built Bars taste great, but they are also amazingly healthy for you. Each Built Bar contains 17 to 18 grams of protein, ranges in calories from 130 to 180, contains only 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and only 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Amazing tasting, amazingly healthy. What's not to like about a Built Bar? 
So go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off of your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Seth Topol joined by Spoked Z. And we're going to continue to play, if not them, then who? With the Eastern Conference, we've got the Atlantic Division and uh, we've also got the Metropolitan Division to get to. Uh, Spoked, I would assume, we'll just go ahead and uh, and put them as the favorite, although I'm sure they've got some uh, heavy competition from the two and the three. Let's take the Tampa Bay Lightning, throw them out. Who has the best chance to go to the conference finals from the Atlantic Division if the Tampa Bay Lightning are not in contention? The Atlantic's interesting because you got a, a, like a story of two halves, like the top four teams – are juggernauts or borderline juggernauts and teams that absolutely, if they won the Stanley cup, you'd be like, yeah, that totally makes sense. And then four that are pretty not great. Depends how you feel about Montreal, I guess. But um, if you told me that one of Boston, Toronto or Florida finished above Tampa Bay, I wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't shock me, but I guess, the trendy pick right now is Florida, so I'll just say them because I think they're a ton of fun to watch. I think Mackenzie Wegar is an unbelievable defenseman for them. Ekblad looks like he's back. He was on pace to put up a Norris-type season last year, and Spencer Knight's going to be there, so who knows what happens with Bob. Um, but I really like the addition of Reinhardt. They got Duclair signed, so I think that's a team that is ready to really make that jump. So just to be a, just for the fun of it, I'm going to take Florida. Okay. Um, the Metropolitan, I, I would assume, and I didn't check these uh, because I literally just came up with this as we started the episode. I would assume Pittsburgh is probably the favorites from the Metropolitan. And so we'll take them and throw them away. Um, if not Pittsburgh, which other team do you think has the best chance to go to the conference finals? Well, I think Pittsburgh, you said before, you said Pittsburgh and Washington. Those are two teams that are going to be fighting for a playoff spot. I'd, if you're going to pick a favorite in that division, it's one of Carolina or, or the Islanders. Um, and just because I think I picked Carolina to win the division, but afterwards I really didn't feel good about it. I think the Islanders are probably the team that I'd say are the favorite in that division. So if you okay. want to like throw them out, we can do that. Yeah. And then I'd probably go with Carolina. Um I just think the Islanders, we know how they play. Um, very structured. Uh, they roll four lines. They defend hard. They have two really, really, really good goaltenders, and that's always a recipe for success. And if you've been following along with them for the past couple of years, they look like they're primed to finally just do it and make that step and either go to the final or win a Stanley Cup. Um, they added our boy Parise, which is such an Islanders-type addition. <laughs> Uh, Chara's back with the Islanders. Um, that top line of um, Anders Lee, who's back from his ACL injury, Matt Barzal, and Kyle Palmer could be really good. Um, and I mean, they play their fourth line like a third line, or sometimes they I mean they, they're all playing 12 to 14 minutes, so I think they're probably the favorite in that division. And then after them, I'd say Carolina. I think Sveshnikov's going to go off this year. Um, the, the questions with Carolina is you took both of their goalies away and you brought in two guys that are definitely question marks. I think anti yeah. Ranta is who they brought in um, along with Freddie Anderson. I got to make sure I'm not getting that one wrong. Yeah. Those are the two you bring in. So anti Ranta has been unbelievable. He just can't stay healthy. I think the last three years he's played since 18, 19, he played 12 games, 19, 20, he played 33 games last year. He played 12 games. Um, so if he stays healthy, then that's good for them. And if Freddie Anderson can bounce back, like he should be able to, even though he's been trending down pretty bad with Toronto the last couple of years, um, then they'll be okay. But you lose Dougie Hamilton, um, that hurts a lot. And the guys they bring in should be good, but that's still a question mark when you replace like half your decor. So It'll be interesting to see what happens with them. But, I mean, you're not going to find a whole lot of teams with better forwards or a combination of forwards than Carolina. So they should be really good again. Um, 
I just wonder if there was a little bit too much turnover and they lost the wrong guys. Yeah, that, that certainly could be. Um, yes or no, before we uh, take a little time to talk about your newest project, Buffalo, just like I asked with Arizona, any chance that they sum up, scrounge up enough to uh, to make a serious run, yes or no? Nope. I mean, there's just no – there's legitimately no – I don't even know who's going to score a goal for them this year. Legitimately. Oof. I mean, it's crazy. Like, their lineup is just – I mean, Jeff Skinner makes $9 million for another six years. Kyle Pozo makes six for this year and next year. Like, Victor Olofsson's the only guy that can really score for them right now. I hope Casey Middlestat puts it together and like finally takes a step. He's so young still, but they rushed him and it has really kind of killed him. But, yeah. um, you know, with Don Granado, he looks a lot better. So I hope that some of those young players that have been really exciting prospects for a while that kind of got destroyed just by being rushed. I hope they can put something together and look okay, but. It, it's a bad, that's a really bad hockey team. And I mean, anytime you're relying on Craig Anderson and Dustin Zakarski and net in the Atlantic division with Tampa, Boston, Florida, Toronto, even Montreal, like that's not going to go very well. Yikes. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Uh, some potential teams that could make a run if the favorites in each division are somehow snapped from the earth. Um, before we go though, spoke want to give you an opportunity. Uh, I know you got a new project with uh, our friends at the soda pod. Uh, so just tell us a little bit about Judd's buds. Yeah. The soda pod guys decided it was a good idea to give me full reign over my own show by myself, where I'm pretty much just going to talk about every prospect in Minnesota system. I think a lot of people finally like really got into the Minnesota wild last year with Kaprizov coming in. Now they're an exciting team. They have the national spotlight. And they have a lot of really good, exciting prospects that people should be um, trying to learn about before they make the jump into the NHL, which is going to be sooner than later. So I pretty much just turn my mic on, I hit record, and I don't edit anything, and I just start talking. The first one was like an hour and a half, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to not do that. I think I was talking about hockey for like 20 minutes of that hour and a half. Other than that, I was just – at one point I told you I was looking out the window and I forgot I was recording a podcast. I was like, oh, I should probably get back into it again. Well, yep, like that's I... what I'm doing. Judd's Buds. And if anyone's wondering about the name, the director of scouting for the wild is Judd Brackett. And I would assume that, you know, these are his, these are his boys that he's drafting. So I decided to call it Judd's Buds with a Z because I'm Spoke Z. Yep. It's uh, it's electric. And and as I said, you know, as the reps as the reps come, the uh, the idea will flesh it out a little more. But I just I like the chaos at this point. So it's yeah, uh, that's it's what it is. It's pure also. chaos. It's yeah. legitimately pure chaos. Well worth the listen. Well, that uh, I think is going to do it for today's episode of Lockdown Wild. So huge thanks to Spoke Z for joining the show today. Uh, make sure to follow Lockdown wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, also now that you are finished with your technically second, but first listen of the day, make sure to go check out Lockdown NHL as we uh, now are in the NHL season uh, to get uh, all the news surrounding your favorite teams uh, and players as the season unfolds. Uh, make sure to subscribe on YouTube as well. We've got videos coming out all throughout the week um, once the season gets going for the Wild. So don't miss out on any of that. And you can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.